Hi, I'm Priya Narayanan and today I'm going to take you back more than 130 years to a time when India was still under the British rule, to a time when people mostly still travelled by animal carts, buses, perhaps trains and if they wanted to travel abroad, they used ships, not aeroplanes. It was also a time when there were no computers and emails, but good old letters. Handwritten, sealed in envelopes with stamps, and dropped into the ubiquitous red metal boxes that were strewn all across town. I'm sure you must have noticed some of these in your city. Have you ever used them? If not, I suggest you do. It's a rather fun experience. You must be wondering why I'm talking about letters here. Well, it's because it was a letter that changed the life of the self-made mathematician Srinivasa Ramamutan and propelled him into a path that earned him the genius tag. This letter was to a professor at England's Cambridge University, Godfrey Hardy. How do I know? Good question. I know because I spent almost three and a half years researching the life of Ramanujan and I poured the essence of all that I discovered into this pitchable biography, Srinivasa Ramanujan, Friend of Numbers. The book, with awesome illustrations by Satvik Gadi, has been published by Publica Books and was released earlier this year. Samarajan lived a very short life. He died when he was just 32 years old. Yet, in that short life, his passion for mathematics catapulted him to the status of one of the most brilliant mathematicians the world has seen. I got to first know about him through Robert Kennegal's lovely book, The Man Who Knew Infinity. For reasons still unknown to me, the book had a profound impact on me. No sooner than I read the book, I got an opportunity to go to Chennai and I was thrilled to bits. The first thing I did was book train tickets to Kumbakonam, where Ramanujan had spent the better part of his short life. Once there, I spent half a day walking up and down the Sarangapani family street that was at one time witness to the many eccentricities of the little Ramanujan. When I reached his house, a set of steps invited me into this really narrow space. Uh, the blue columns that I saw wouldn't have been blue during Ramanujan's time. I'm not sure they were well painted, uh, given that Ramanujan's family was rather poor. And then the Bangalore tiles uh, wouldn't have been there either. I'm sure it would have been a thatched roof or something like that. But the columns and rooms really didn't matter to me. What mattered was the high plinth on which Ramanujan sat as a child with slate and chalk and worked on his ideas. What mattered was the small window behind which was a room with just a single wooden cot. Under this cot, the young school-going Ramanujan would hide and solve equations because his father would get angry if he saw him doing so something so utterly useless. Looking on the steps in the backyard of that house, I recollected all the things that I had read in Ganagal's book, and soon I was trying to imagine Ramanujan's childhood, figuring out how his surroundings could have contributed to his love for mathematics. The well in the backyard, the massive and beautiful Gopuram of the Sarangapani temple, and so on. As it is this quite unknown to me, a seed was sown into my thoughts. A seed of an idea for a book for children based on Ramanujan's life story. Researching for the book, I ended up reading a lot of complex mathematical papers and uh, a lot of other books that talked about the life and works of Ramanujan. When I finally sat down to write them, the key challenge that I faced was how do I um, explain all these complex concepts to a child? How do I write in a child-friendly manner um, so that uh, you know, children wouldn't look at the book and say, you, math, and just run away from the book. I also wanted to bring out the characteristics of uh, Ramanujan, uh, most importantly, his passion, in a way that would inspire children to follow their heart. Today, that idea has found manifestation in this book that I hold in my hand. To give you a sneak peek into how all these aspects I talked about found their way to the book, let me read a little excerpt from it. It was the 22nd of December, 1887. The weather was pleasant, and the mighty Kaveri meandered as usual towards the sea along its tree line banks at Eut. Just after sunset, a boy was born to Srinivasa and Kumbh. 
Ten days later, in keeping the tradition, he was given a name, Srinivasa Arenda Ramanjit. Soon after, the family moved to Kumbakonam. Ramanjan grew up a quiet little boy, always thinking, always full of questions. How far were the clouds? How big were the stars? How long was the equator? But most of all, he was fascinated by numbers. Every morning, as his mother gave him a bath, Ramanujan would watch the ripples in the water move outwards in circles small to big. As she combed his long hair and coiled it into a knot, he would hear chants from the nearby temple. Namas so my so my namo, namas so my cha cha so my namo. And as she walked into school, he would look up at the rows of gods and goddesses carved on the temple gopurams. There were patterns all around him. Were there patterns in numbers too? As he grew up, while other children played games on the street after school, Ramanujan played with numbers. He sat with his plate and chalk, filling the slate with numbers, rubbing them out with his elbow and starting all over again. Numbers tossed and turned in front of him. They came together and moved apart. He made patterns only he could see. And this idea of patterns uh, that only he could see is a refrain that continues through the book as we learn about his childhood, his school days, his equation with his teachers, and what happens when he graduates and goes to college. And then of course we come to the part about the letters that I talked about in the beginning. Let me read a bit from it. But Ramanujan was happy to have free time to work on his ideas. When he showed these to senior mathematicians, they were impressed. Your work is good, they said and help publish some of them. But Ramanujan did not want to remain good. He wanted to get better. So he wrote three well-known professors at England's Cambridge University, asking to join them to learn more from them. For the professors, Ramanujan was only a clerk from a small town of a far away colony of the British Empire. Could the strange ideas and equations be really important? Two of them said no. But Professor Godfrey Harvey saw a spark of something special in Ramanujan. Come and work with me, he wrote back. And that was a letter that changed the course of Ramanujan's life. The book, of course, carries on with the rest of his life and, of course, ends with the sad part where he dies so young of a disease. But I would like to read the very last page. Uh, if you remember, I had talked about uh, the little Ramanujan wondering about how long the equator could have been. In 1914, Ramanujan calculated the length of the equator to be 40,078 kilometers. Remember, he had only his mathematical knowledge. You know, he didn't have computers, no calculators, nothing. Today, it has taken us calculators and computers to know that the length is round about 40,075 kilometers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into the book as well as my writing journey. You can read a lot more about it uh, with Purukhas to Boot on my blog. Uh, I had the chance, uh, luckily, to visit uh, a lot of places that are associated with Ramanujan, either to stay there uh, temporarily or on a long term basis. Uh, both in Tamil Nadu and in London and Cambridge and uh, you can see the photographs of all these places uh, there. Uh, it, it was a wonderful journey and uh, I'm so glad I could visit these places. Well, that's all from me and Ramanujan. Uh, take care, stay safe and follow your heart.